morning, church. I am so thankful that you joined us online today. I'm Pastor Jen, one of the pastors here at Church of the Savior, and I want you to know that we recognize that life is difficult, and that is why coming into worship and being a part of a church, it matters. Our witness in the world, it matters, and so I'm thankful that you're here. Make sure you tell us that you're here and make sure you find the links on our website so that you can give your offering and, and find all the information that you need today. Also, in worship today, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. We're going to come together as a body wherever we might find ourselves and be a part of this Holy Sacrament. But we need you to get ready in order to do that. So find a piece of bread or crackers, some juice or water, whatever you can find, and bring that to your worship space so that you are ready in the middle of our service today. I want you to know, if you have a child that participated in our music program, we love our music here at Church of the Savior, and if you had a child, we want to make sure that they're recognized this year. And so today, between 3 and 5, all of our choir directors will be here ready to receive your kids and hand them a certificate and a pin. So you'll drive up into the back part of our sanctuary, and they will greet you and hand your child their certificate and pin because we just want to celebrate the music that we were able to do this year and how we were able to lift our voices up in song and praise to God. So make sure you plan for that today between 3 and 5. Also, beginning tonight, between 7 and 9, we're going to begin a prayer vigil outside walking the grounds of our church building. And so we want you to go to the website and find the link to sign up. Every night, this church and other churches in our community are going to be praying, worshiping together in prayer. So make sure you find that link and you can sign up. And if you can't come over here tonight, please know we invite you to gather together and be in prayer. You know, the scriptures say, Jesus says, to, to his disciples, feed my sheep, tend to my sheep, feed my lambs. And that is why we are here today, to be inspired and challenged and moved, to be that light, feeding and loving and caring for the sheep. So I'm thankful that you're here today. Let us worship. Brothers and sisters, if you lift your net and it's empty, come here will cast it out again into Christ's abundance. If you open your eyes but do not recognize the Holy One, come here. We'll find the risen Christ here among us. If your life is filled with mourning, come here. Christ is leading a dance of joy. Come here, sisters and brothers, to give blessing and honor and glory to God. Now let us bow our heads in prayer. Resurrected Lord, we do love you. 
Help our unlove. As we worship today, transform our lives from the way we were into true image bearers. Commission us to your service, despite our poor catch records. Thank you that you are not finished with us yet. Amen. After the resurrection, when Jesus showed himself to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, he did not give them a test of their faithfulness. He gave them a gift of abundance, more fish than their nets could hold. He did not preach at them or try to convince them who he was. He simply said, come and have breakfast. And they knew him by his welcome. Likewise, our Lord invites us to his table of abundance and shows us what grace looks like each time we gather to remember the transformation of death into new life. Christ leaves no one out and tells us to do the same as we tend his sheep by offering the abundant welcome of God's grace. Hear now the Gospel of John. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the di disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was how the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my, feet, my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Can you see the light shining from the tender flames, casting red and yellow hues on the ground? Can you smell the smoldering smoke from the red glowing coals? Can you hear the snapple and crackle as the flames lap the crust of bread and fish to create the crispy edges. Can you feel that warmth, warmth radiating from the slow burn fire as the wind from the beach reminds you why you need to sit so close to the heat? Those with some experience of cooking over an outdoor fire know that this fire was planned and burned slowly for a long while. Location and attention were needed to maintain the steady and sustainable temperature to cook the bread and fish. Ingredients needed to be gathered, prepared, and mixed ahead of time. Like a loving mother, Jesus lovingly prepared the elements ahead of their arrival on the beach. Up before dawn to tend the fire, Jesus warmed himself next to the flame and cook their meal. The light has the power to reveal what and who is already there with him. Over the Sea of Tiberias, Jesus must have saw his disciples struggling. Today's reading is from the last chapter of the Gospel of John. Some scholars consider it a second ending or an epilogue to the Gospel. Much has happened before of this with the disciples, Jesus, as the risen Lord, had already introduced himself as rabbi to Mary Magdalene at the tomb. He came through a locked door to the disciples to breathe on him his peace and offer his spirit. 
And again, he came to show Thomas his wounds and to be tangibly present with them. Yet there is one last story in John of a loving meal near the light of a fire that needs to be shared. Maybe Jesus knew the chances were high that his disciples were going to go back to their old ways and ignore their responsibilities. Verse 3, Simon Peter said to them, those that were the disciples with him, I'm going fishing. And they descend, uh, said to him, we will go with you. What a classic example of how contagious the urge is to give up in despair, especially in a group. Simon Peter decides to act on an urge to go back to his old ways, go fishing, one of his habits, and his friends follow with him. Was the change, the cross, and the reality of it all just getting to be too much? Was despair and fear blocking the light of Christ in their hearts? What may have been just weeks before, they followed the physical light of the world, heard his voice, and saw his physical acts. To be in ministry with Jesus, that must have been like a bonfire of light, constantly being fueled by the real presence of the divine. But now what? Why had everything changed? Where did they go from here? According to the Gospel writer, they had heard or seen him at least three times since he had died on the cross, yet he each a distinct, bold flash on the darkest moments of their lives. Yet flashes of light aren't sustainable in a marathon crisis of change. The urge to go back, to back to what they seemed good enough before, well, it was a privilege they were willing to take. I wonder if the disciples thought that if they repeated their old acts, they could pretend that they didn't see what happened, or they could ignore the words of challenge from Jesus. Yet yeah, sitting on that water all night, well, they knew. Heck, even the fish knew it wasn't working. Sound familiar? For me personally, it sounds way too familiar. The stress of this pandemic journey has disrupted every part of my daily life, relationships, and ministry, and brings me to that same urge some days. I wish I could pretend and act like it hadn't changed me and all my world, that I could go back to my old ways and habits. Yet I realize that that is unrealistic and unsustainable privilege. If I take my eyes away from myself, the light of Christ illuminates the names of over 100,000 victims of COVID-19. I remember that each one of those names has a family, friends, and a community connected to it that can't go back and pretend it didn't happen. You know, death and disease, well, it's not new to us, but we know in this pandemic, we must learn to be different. At a time such as this, am I going to give in to the urge to turn away from God's light, walk away with Peter and the disciples? Well, as Jake mentioned in the sermon last week, the light of Christ reveals what is already there and guides us to the truth. We know the light of Christ still shines, shines the truth on sin and suffering in our community, even when I try to ignore and walk away. Past few weeks, people all over the country have seen the video heard the names and stories, and watched the protests against systemic racism in our country. The light reveals that which we need to see and be honest about the results of 400 years of racial injustice in our country. As I listen, reflect, and pray personally, 
I realize more and more the meaning of the words often attributed to Rabbi Shemel ben Nachmani. We do not see things as they are. We see things as we are. As such a time as this, when I want to give in to the urge to label and blame others, I am coming to grips with my own vision, my own perspective, my own social location as a person of privilege in white America. There is the urge to believe, to give in, to walk away and ignore it. It's too hard. What can I do? I'm just one person. Yet the light of Christ reveals and shines brightly on justice and convicts me to do better. I know the more I ignore that fact, the more I continue to be part of the problem. My ignorance and willingness to stay silent in the face of racism will only condone and perpetuate hate and violence. Christ calls us out on our fears calls us out on the chaos and creates a path forward. Even when I, like the disciples, give in to the urge to ignore, he goes fishing for us. Jesus called from the beach at the end of that long, fateful night. Hear his parental loving voice calling out in John 21, verses 5 through 7. Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were able, not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. Do you hear his message from the heart? I know you are seeking comfort from your fears. I know you are trying to shield your eyes from the pain, the grief, the suffering with your old ways. But stop and listen. Change your perspective. Turn and learn a new way. My light and hope are so abundant. The change of their perspective from one side of the boat to the other, to one way of looking to the other, produces an abundant miracle. So many fish, they can't gather it all in. In the abundant miracle, they know it is the Lord. They jumped at the chance to meet him, the meal he prepared lovingly for them. So some dripping wet, all of them exhausted from the long night, they find themselves surrounding a smoldering fire. Their faith yet again smoldering and growing stronger as they are nourished by the bread, by the abundant light of love in the presence of Christ. This was no flash in the pan. This is what the transforming light of Christ looks like, folks. They no longer had to ask. They know the Lord is present. Jesus reminds us in our guiding verse from John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me won't walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The fire on the beach was only temporary, yet the light ignited in the disciples that morning was to ignite them to move past their fears, their old ways, and transform the world. Whoever follows the Lord will have the light of Christ to shine to the ends of the earth. So bellies full, clothing dried and hot amber smoldering, I wonder how quickly the conversation slowed. The excitement that once caused one to jump out of the boat grew deeper now in the calming presence of the Lord. The Spirit always calls us to go deeper and challenges us to be vulnerable. 
In that last talk with Peter, Christ ignites the light to follow him. Christ moves him from just words to real, loving action. How does God challenge our understanding of love, of God, ourselves, and others? Do we separate out who we love and how we love? Do we give some more grace than others, based on how they look or how we expect them to act? John 21, verse 15 states, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. When do God's questions and our quick answers go deeper to change our perspective on our daily life? How do we hear Christ questioning us, challenging us to dismantle our preconceived notions and our old biases? Do we hear the challenging words to root out personal and systemic sin that builds walls of injustice and division against our brothers and sisters? A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. When do we stop falling falling back to our old ways, our old urges to take that courageous challenge and open ourselves up to change? Vulnerably leaning into a divine love and grace that we can't control or manipulate. When do we stop the excuses and listen? He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Follow me. Love me. Feed my lambs. Tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. In a time when we could give in and fall into the urge just to go back, can we see the light forward? Can we feel the love of Christ calling us forward? There is a change in the air, and it is abundant with the light of hope and love. We are called to be the light and love of Christ now. Let us follow and love. Let us care and tend to one another. Let us feed and serve one another. Amen. Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, 
to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time has come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended into heaven, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. Now I invite you to join with me as we gather in all of our many places, many voices becoming one as we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As our gospel reading from John reminded us today, Jesus comes to where the disciples are on the beach. Jesus comes to us where we are today, wherever that may be, whatever elements are in front of you, Jesus is present in them. Jesus offers the bread of life, the cup of salvation, new hope in a world of chaos and confusion. The Lord offers his love, broken and shed for us. Let us receive Christ's love and forgiveness as we receive bread and cup. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus draws us from the margins into a great feast. He draws us out of a crowd to healing. He draws us from death to new life. Each day, God finds the way that we need to be loved and challenged, and then calls us to minister to others in warm hospitality, healing mercies, and the promise of resurrection and new life. We respond to this high call through our giving this day.
us pray. Jesus, we thank you for strengthening us in faith by feeding and nourishing us with your risen life. Bless these gifts, which we offer in response to your sacrificial giving of yourself to us. Bless each of our lives as we respond to your challenge to follow you, sharing your love and life with others. Amen. You're the God of the city, you're the king of these people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are, you're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are, there is no one like God, God. There is no one like you, God. Greater things are yet to come, and greater things are still to be done in the city. Greater things are yet to come, and greater things are still to be done here. You're the Lord of creation, the creator of all things. You're the king above all things. You are. You're the strength in the weakness. You're the love to the broken. You're the joy and the sadness You are There is no one like you, God There is no one like you, Lord Greater things are yet to come Greater things are still to be done in the city Greater things have yet to come, and greater things are still to be done in the city. We shine a light for all to see, we shine this light for all to believe in the city. With open hearts and open eyes, we shine your light to glorify you in the city. Cause there is no one like you, God. There is no one like you. May God shine the light of glory into your hearts. May Christ be with you and never leave you. And may the Spirit renew the image of God within you as you bear God's light to the world. Thank you for joining us in worship today. Know that we are praying for you as all of us are going out into our city to be that light. And I look forward to seeing you next week online. God bless. There is no one like